Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everyone. My name is Frank DeMora. I'm the author of the prophecy documentary called The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. Today is June the 29th, 2017. I want to discuss with you the prophecies that Daniel told us about the coming third Jewish temple in the last days. This temple was definitely prophesied in many different places, and it was prophesied that it would come in the last days. Now, if we are in the last days, and I have no doubts, these are the end times. One of the major prophecies that we should be looking for, seeing signs of, has to do with the rebuilding of the Jewish temple and Jerusalem. Now, to begin with, I want to start off with the prophecy about Jerusalem, because this is, like the coming third temple, a major prophecy for the last days. This article from Israel Today will give you what the prophet Zechariah told us about Jerusalem in chapter 12 of Zechariah. So since they cover this in this article, I'm just going to read the article for you that they talk about what's happening in Israel today. This article came out November the 23rd of 2010, but is just as relevant and current as June 29th of 2017 because the same exact thing is still occurring. The headline, Jerusalem, a cup of trembling and a burdensome stone. Now they took that right from Zechariah. The prophecy of Zechariah chapter 12 was written approximately 2,500 years ago predicting a future day when the world's focus would be on Jerusalem. Behold, I make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people around about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. And if you've been watching the news, you see that the majority of the world is now coming against Jerusalem, coming against their policies. Now here are just a few of the many, many articles showing us that what Zechariah prophesied is coming true in our generation. Here's how the world turned against Israel. That came out December the 2nd of 2014. Here's another one from February the 5th of 2015. UN condemns Israel, ignores Hezbollah. There's another article from the Jerusalem Post. The headline, survey, the whole world is against us. This is how the Israelis are viewing what's happening to Israel as all the nations are lining up to come against Israel and, of course, Jerusalem. And of course, under the Obama administration, as you can see from this New York Post article that came out October the 4th of 2015, Team Obama has thrown Israel to the diplomatic wolves. And here's one more that came from the Jerusalem Post in 2016. Anti-Semitic in UK highest since period following 2009 Gaza conflict. Here is a video that was released by the plowatch.org on January the 6th, 2017. Abbas advisor on religious affairs. If the U.S. moves its embassy to guess where? To Jerusalem. It is a declaration of war on all Muslims. So you could see from this article, we definitely have people who are burdening themselves over Jerusalem. There's another one that came out March the 20th, 2017. Trump administration to boycott UN Council over anti-Israel agenda. So the nations in the UN, most of the nations in the UN, have taken aim at the nation of Israel. And Donald Trump, a friend of Israel, has noticed it and has taken a stand against what the UN is doing Israel. And here's the last one that I want to show you before we move on from the Jerusalem Post, January the 3rd of 2017. Bloodshed will follow if Trump moves U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. So without a question, 
Israel, and specifically what takes place in Jerusalem, is constantly in the news, and constantly nations are coming against this tiny nation. Let me go on. It says, further in verses 7, 8, and 9, the prophecy makes it clear that God will ultimately save the city and its people, but to the surrounding nations, the attempted conquest of Jerusalem will cause them great trouble, and to every nation pursuing to lift Jerusalem out of the Jewish control, it will prove to be a heavy burden and be injurious to them all. This is widely regarded as an end-time prophecy, and by examining the current geopolitical and spiritual situation of the Middle East conflict, it is safe to say the time frame of this prophecy is upon us. A little further down in the report, it says, Today, millions of Jewish people have returned, and many are still making Aliyah as prophesied in the Bible. However, the Islamic community, the nation surrounding Israel, Psalm 83, verses 4 through 8, the international community and the Vatican all have a different goal in mind for Jerusalem. They would all remove complete Jewish control over the city, and erase the Jewish victory in the June 1967 malicious six-day war and either divide Jerusalem or attempt a complete conquest of it if they could. So this report that came out November the 23rd of 2010 hit the target right in the bullseye because that's exactly what's taking place towards the nation of Israel and specifically Jerusalem because that is where the most holy site for both the Jewish people and the Muslims are right there on the Temple Mount area. Now I covered that prophecy about Zechariah and Jerusalem. Now we're going to get to the second part that I wanted to cover very very important and it all ties together the prophecy about the rebuilt Jewish temple there are many places in the Bible where it's referenced about this prophecy and here's one in Daniel 927 for example and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week of course this scripture is talking about the Antichrist who will not make a covenant but he will only confirm a covenant that was apparently established previously. It goes on, And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So in the middle of the seven-year period of time, three and a half years into this agreeing or confirming this covenant, the Antichrist is going to actually stop the sacrifices that have been prophesied that will be coming back in our generation. Now, like so many of the other prophecies that are being fulfilled, this is also in the works. Let me show you this article that came out March 31st of 2015 from the Times of Israel. Passover sacrifice reenacted by Jewish priests in training. And they give you a picture here of them carrying the animals that they're going to sacrifice and they're practicing for the real thing that is coming up. Now in this article they show the backdrop of the temple that's going to be rebuilt. And they're practicing their sacrifices but in the future, in the near future, there's going to be the actual temple where they'll be doing the sacrifices that the prophet Daniel was told by God. Now there's another prophecy that Jesus Christ gave to us in Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth let him understand. And he's referring back to the Old Testament and what I just showed you from Daniel's prophecy. So he's actually repeating what we already were told from the Old Testament. Now moving on to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4, Paul the Apostle writes to us about the Antichrist. And he says, Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he 
as God sitteth in, now get this, in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So the temple has to be rebuilt. The Antichrist is going to come, and he is going to walk physically into that prophesied third temple that, that will be built soon. And we're coming to the last scripture that I want to use from Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. This is from Jesus Christ now who gave it to the youngest apostle, the apostle John. And he says this, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God. So we know exactly what he's measuring, the temple. And in order to measure it, it has to exist. Let's go on. And the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they trod underfoot forty and two months. Now with this prophecy, there are many prophecy teachers who believe that the outer court, where we see here from where the Dome of the Rock is, that when God told him not to measure that area, that he was really showing us that the third temple could be built next to this Dome of the Rock area. And that is a possibility because if there was something that was confirmed, this peace agreement that was confirmed, maybe part of that confirmation would be that both of these people, the Jews and the Muslims, would find a way under a covenant to exist together. And having both the Dome of the Rock for the Islam faith and the Jewish temple for the Jewish faith. It is a possibility. So now that you see all of the prophecies, let me show you that God is working to fulfill these very words, and he's doing it so through the Israeli government. My friends, this third temple is definitely going to come. And here's the proof the road is being set. Take a look at this Jerusalem Post. This article came out March 29th. 2016 with the headline high-speed train from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv to be completed by 2018. The highly anticipated high-speed train that will connect Jerusalem to Tel Aviv in under 30 minutes will be operational in 2018. The head of Israel Railways announced on Monday during a tour with the Knesset members at construction site for the NIS 1.82 billion project. Boaz Tafir, CEO of the railway, said the train will take passengers from Jerusalem International Convention Center in Tel Aviv's Haganah Station in 28 minutes flat. Now one might ask, what's the significance of this in relation to the Temple Mount? What's the purpose of this kind of news of transporting people on a fast train? Well, it becomes very significant when you talk about delivering mass number of people to the Temple Mount area to pray and to worship there at the Temple Mount. Now what you're going to see from this next report is specific reasons why a massive fast train system is being constructed and without any question the israeli government is preparing their nation to be able to go up the jews to go up and have the access to the temple mount and be able to pray there and the worship there like they haven't been able to do for almost two thousand years breaking israel news June 27, 2015. The headline, Infrastructure to Bring Millions of Pilgrims to Temple Mount Quietly Being Constructed. For the first time in approximately 2,000 years since the time of the Second Temple, plans are being formed by the Israeli government to build an effective infrastructure for Jews to make their obligatory pilgrimage to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The third temple will require a functional infrastructure that could facilitate the transportation of millions of Jews to Jerusalem during and after these festivals. Israel's Minister of Transportation, Yisrael Katz, has publicly stated that facilitating this was his intention when planning the line of the fast train currently under construction between the airport in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. 
So right here, make no doubt about it, they're getting ready for the third temple. And not only are they getting ready for the third temple, but they are making definite plans in their infant structure in order to transport those people to the Temple Mount area. You could see it right here. Intention when planning this fast train specifically for that purpose. In a meeting with the temple movement representatives in February, the minister explained, as a Kohen, Jew of the priestly caste, I have a special connection to the holy site. In front of my eyes, I constantly see the words, prepare the way, prepare the way. Now, without question, Israel's minister of transportation is quoting an Old Testament prophecy when he talks about prepare the way, prepare the way. Take a look. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, it says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway of our God. Now, as the Christians know, this prophecy was a prophecy about Jesus Christ coming on this earth the first time. But Israel's minister of transportation sees it as a call not only to go to the temple, but the temple will bring about the Lord. So prepare the way. Katz is planning on extending the line of the fast train to transport people from Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv to Jerusalem directly to the Western Wall. The final stop will be the Katal Har Hebiat Stop, Western Wall Temple Mount Stop. Yaakov Haveman, chairman of the Friends of the Temple Organization, noted that the Ministry of Transportation's involvement was a necessary first step. We expect millions of Jews coming to the Temple Mount even before the Temple is built. So transportation is a potential bottleneck, Haman explained to Breaking Israel News. We need to open up more entrances to the Temple Mount since there is currently only one entrance available to the Jews. Now, if you notice in this paragraph, they tell us even before the temple is built. So they're looking forward to the future where a time where they will have control of who is able to go up to the Temple Mount area besides the Muslims who are currently trying to keep the Jews off the Temple Mount. And they also talk about the need to open up more entrances to the Temple Mount. In other words, they can see a time coming where Jews in different parts of Jerusalem will be able to migrate their way, not just one entrance, but more than that, to the Temple Mount. So it looks like the current status of the way things are run on the Temple Mount by the Muslims right now is going to change. And the planning behind the scenes is taking place. It should be noted that no matter what anybody does to try to stop the Jews from going to the Temple Mount, it will be futile. Because the prophecies are very specific that the Temple will be built. And people, the Jews, will be going up to this Temple Mount area to worship the Lord the way they used to so many years ago with the sacrifices exactly as the prophecies tell us. So what we're seeing in Israel taking place right now is preparing the way to fulfill prophecy. As you'll see from this article, Israel just isn't going to rely on the fast train. They have other modes of transportation to move mass numbers of people to this Temple Mount area to pray and to worship. Cable cars, for example, that you'll see in this article. Listen to this. In a similar vein, Jerusalem Mayor Nero Barkett has recently announced plans to build a cable car system that will be capable of transporting thousands of people per hour to the area of the Western Wall and Temple Mount. The Israeli government ministers just recently approved this plan during a cabinet meeting held inside the Western Wall tunnels. So what's really important about this paragraph is that we're seeing now for the first time in a very, very long time how the Israeli government, their ministers, are actually approving plans 
to be carried out that will lift so many people over to the Temple Mount. This would infuriate the Muslims. So why would Israel's government do this knowing the problems that it could cause? It's because I believe in my heart that the Israelis believe that honoring God is more important than upsetting Muslims who want to protect the Dome of the Rock, the third most holiest religious site for the Muslim or in the Islamic faith. Now getting back to the article, it further states, the stated purpose of all these plans is to modernize the capital city, making it easier for both residents and tourists to navigate its increasing traffic. But it is abundantly clear that all of these upgrades will soon be used for the purpose of allowing millions of Jews from around the globe to quickly and easily visit the temple and to fulfill their biblical obligation. So as you can see for yourself, the Israeli officials are making it very, very clear, abundantly clear, that everything that they're doing, these upgrades, are all for the purpose of moving millions of Jews to the Temple Mount area. And as you're going to see from another article that I'm going to present to you, Israel is spending masses amounts of money on the infrastructure and transportation systems to move these millions right to the Temple Mount to worship. So when they talk about allowing millions of Jews, that's exactly what the Israeli government's plans are. They want to get to the point where they're in full control. No matter what happens, their people will have access, just like the Muslims do right now. The Jews will have just as much control over that Temple Mount as the Muslims have today. The article goes on, we have to establish express service bus transportation to the Temple Mount from all parts of the country, Haman said. The Temple Mount Express bus lines will have special blue and white bus stops enabling Jews to regularly travel directly to the Temple Mount, pray, and return home. So the Jews right now cannot pray on the Temple Mount. As a matter of fact, the Jews are having a very, very difficult time even getting to the Temple Mount because of the violence created by the Palestinian organization who are trying their hardest to keep all the Jews away from the Temple Mount area because they're afraid that the Jews will build the Temple. And that's exactly what the prophecy said is going to happen. The Temple will be built. So as I said early in this presentation, you cannot stop what was written in the scriptures. The Jews will go up, they will build a temple, they will do the sacrifices, and unlike now, they will be praying in the temple. Since the modern state of Israel was created in 1948, and even to a greater extent, since the liberation and unification of Jerusalem in 1967, building has been nonstop in the capital city. Nonetheless, all this progress is only the first step. So in light of fulfillment of Bible prophecy, this paragraph about nonstop building in the capital city of Jerusalem, take a look what the Bible has to say about the last days in building up these cities. Here's one of those prophecies from Isaiah chapter 44. The Lord says this, I am the Lord who carries out the words of his servants and fulfills the predictions of his messengers who says of Jerusalem, it shall be inhabited of the towns of Judah. They shall be built, and of their ruins I will restore them. That's exactly what the Jews have been doing since 1948, fulfilling prophecy, and now they're in the midst of going to fulfill the prophecy about the third temple. So let's continue on with the article. Many new hotels will need to be built and upgraded. Roads will need to be widened and extended. Utilities will need to be improved and upgraded. And new methods of transportation will need to be implemented. What we are seeing is to prepare the way for Jews to go up to the Temple Mount, Haman said. This is a fact. 
if the Islamic leaders were so intelligent and they picked up on exactly what Israel's plans are and what they're actually doing, preparing for the Jews to go up to the Temple Mount, this would be an act of war, a takeover of the Temple Mount or even sharing it for that matter to the Muslim leaders is an act of war. But it isn't if the temple will be built, it's when. Let's continue. When the temple is built, the changes will be even greater. One of the principles of the final redemption is that it will come about through a series of processes that will seem to most to be no more than natural evolution. For those that have a better understanding and knowledge of these processes, it is clear that in order to accommodate the masses that will need to come to Jerusalem three times a year, a massive upgrade to the current Jerusalem infrastructure is required. Well, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about for a declaration of war. This is from the Jerusalem Post. It came out October the 30th of 2014. Abbas closing off the Temple Mount tenement to declaration of war. This is Ahmad Abbas, the president of the Palestinian organization. Palestinian Authority President Ahmad Abbas called the closure of the Temple Mount to all visitors on Thursday, a declaration of war as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called for calm and civility in Jerusalem following the attempted assassination of Yehuda Glick Wednesday night. The PA chief pinned the blame for the dangerous escalation in violence on the Israeli government, saying the peak was this morning when the Jerusalem leadership decided to close the holy site to all visitors. So as I said, any tampering with this holy site at the Temple Mount for the Muslims is huge problems, not only for Israel, but for the world. Now what I found interesting about this article, you'll see here that Yehuda Glick, he was, as it says, his life was in jeopardy because he was shot five times by an assassin. He didn't die. Yohiro Glick just happens to be one of the head people for the Temple Mount Institute who was pushing for the rebuilding of the Jewish temple and full access for the Jews to be able to pray on the Temple Mount. And since October the 30th of 2014, after that assassination, guess who was elected to the Israeli Knesset? Yehuda Glick was elected and he is one of the Israeli officials who continues to push for the temple to be rebuilt. God is in control. The temple will be rebuilt, as I said, over and over again, just like the prophecies tell us. The question is, would you believe it? Now, earlier in my presentation, I told you that the Israeli government was spending masses amounts of money for the transportation for getting those Jews to the Temple Mount and any visitors for that matter. And as time goes by, Israel is going to put its hold on the Muslims so that the Jews can have that full access. Here's an article that just came out June 7th of 2017. Israel approves plans to tighten grip on East Jerusalem. Well, if you know anything about East Jerusalem, you know that that's where the Temple Mount is. It says Palestinian leaders have denounced new construction projects they say will further tighten Israel's grips on the occupied East Jerusalem and its holy places, including the incendiary site of al Ask Mosque. And that would be where the Dome of the Rock is. The most elaborate plan is for a cable car intended to bring thousands of visitors an hour to the Western Wall in its Jewish prayer plaza immediately below Al Harm, Al Sharif, a compound containing Al Ask and the Golden Top Dome of the Rock. Now take a look at this. It says the $56 million project 
was unveiled at a meeting of the Israeli cabinet in tunnels below the El Haram El Sharif. It is the first time the cabinet has met in Jerusalem's old city, which Israel annexed in violation of the international law. Now this is what the Islamic people are saying, that Israel is in violation of the law. But Israel owns this land and they're in violation of nothing. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called the meeting in the provocative of location late last month to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Israel's illegal occupation of East Jerusalem. Now keep in mind, it's not illegal at all. Israel was attacked by these Arabs and Israel won the war. Israel retook what was theirs in the first place. And they were celebrating the recapture of Jerusalem. And this, my friends, was also a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Palestinians, meanwhile, have expressed mounting concern that Netanyahu's stated intention to strengthen Jerusalem conceals a policy of driving out Palestinians and seizing control over the Alas compound. Israel claims two ancient Jewish temples are built under the mosque. Israel is sending a message to the Palestinians and to Jordan whose officials formally oversee the site that I'll ask is no longer yours. We can enter and we can do as we please there. And this is what I've been talking about for years. The Muslims are afraid of a takeover. And by the amount of money and the preparations that the Israeli government is doing behind the scenes, I would say that it is a good possibility that's exactly what we will see in the very near future. At the weekend, Jibril Jaboub, a senior official in the Palestinian Authority, told the Israeli TV that Netanyahu's government had to stop treating the site as though it were under Israeli sovereignty. If you want to create an explosion, just say it's ours, it's ours, he said. And of course, the explosion that he's talking about, obviously, would be another huge conflict between Israel and the Arabs, the Muslims. Now, in closing, I want to show you the cable cars that Israel plans to be putting into effect to transport all those people. You'll see it there in red, the line going right over to the Temple Mount. So you could drop the people off so that they can go over, walk up to the Dome of the Rock, where the third temple will stand. So in the future, as you see in this picture, thousands will flock to the Western Wall, make their way up to the Temple Mount for the traditional priestly blessings. Only it won't be at the Temple Wall, it will be at the Temple. We are definitely in the last days and the prophecies are speeding up. Jesus Christ came to this earth almost 2,000 years ago. Do you think that he came not to fulfill every prophecy that he ever gave? Do you think that he went to the cross and took a beating like this until death, knowing that none of the words that he said would come true? Christ came. He understood the consequences that he would have to go through to free us from our sins. Today is a good day to realize Christ is the Messiah. Christ is our Lamb that was slain. Today is a good day to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Embrace him now as the Lamb of God slain. Because when he comes back the second time, he's coming back as a king, the King of kings and Lord of lords, as a warrior to get rid of all unrighteousness. Let your name be recorded in his book of life today.
Hello everyone, this is Frank DeMora with the End Times Research Ministry. Two days ago, on June the 27th, I gave you a warning after a video that I made concerning the birds, the fish, and the animals that were dying. I'm going to bring you back to the end of that video to show you what I warned, and then I'll show you why I'm showing you this. Now here's that YouTube video that I made. You'll see it was published June 27th of 2017. And here's the last part of that video. And I was warning, as I said, about the number of reports concerning the birds, fish, and animals. Here we go. Warning, another big earthquake is coming. Jesus told us to watch for this type of sign as well. And I gave the date, 6-27-2017. Now the day after I issued that warning, you'll see it right here, June 28, 2017, there was a what they call a great quake, 6.0 magnitude earthquake, and that quake struck at 10 kilometers deep. And you'll see below the Kermatic Islands. Then on the 29th, the day after that 6.0 magnitude earthquake, there was another one in the same place. And that was, as you could see here, the report that I just pulled up seven hours ago. And this was a little bit different. This was 392 kilometers deep. Now, if you stay in the confines of the word of the Lord and you believe what he tells us, you can tell the people what to expect. And when Jesus told us in Luke 21, 11, there will be great earthquakes as part of these many signs that he gave us, do not doubt his word. Now, the Lord impressed upon my heart to issue this warning two days ago, and the day after that I issued that warning, you saw two different earthquakes at two different depths. I know that there will be more. The word of the Lord never fails. And as a watchman for the Lord, it's my ministry to warn as many people as I can about the signs that Jesus told us to watch for. So I'm connecting the dots for you between the current events and Bible prophecy. This is Frank DeMore with the End Times Research Ministry. God bless.